D&D Warriors, Peach here with I Dream of Indy to talk to you about Skamba Snowfall for the PC. Before I get started, please excuse any mispronunciations in this review. This story shows never before seen representation of the indigenous Sami stories and culture. To be honest, I don't know much about Nordic mythology besides the Norse gods like Loki and Thor, pretty much anything I could see in Marvel. So learning stories about people I don't know is beautiful to me. There's all this culture and background and this game really highlights that. In this game, you play as Alu, a young Sami who is given the gift of being a Neraldis. This is someone who is a healer. They can see spirits, as each person has three different spirits, and it's pretty interesting. There's a natural disaster coming, though what it is exactly is unclear, at least in the beginning, and I don't want to spoil anything, and you're the only one who can stop it according to the spirits. The story was deeply intertwined with nature and just absolutely beautiful. It was told through a series of cutscenes as well as dialogue, especially with other people's spirits who would give you so much information. I do want to give a tiny trigger warning though that there are some animal deaths, and if you're like me that can be quite upsetting. Ali starts off as kind of a slacker. He's supposed to be watching the reindeer for his aunt's family, but he falls asleep and a reindeer gets away. That's what triggers a series of events that leads you to find a drum. Not just any drum, a magical drum, though it is pointed out to you that all drums are magical until proven otherwise. When you hit the drum, you're allowed to see spirits or energy. You have to hunt down four familiar spirits in order to be able to save the day. These spirits include an owl, a bear, a trout, and a fox. Another thing the drum can do is get rid of this dark substance that is sometimes explained to be tar. The story itself was so unique even though finding objects to save the day might not seem that unique, the use of the culture was so interesting that it made it really special to me. The game the game is considered a platformer and there's definitely some metroidvania vibes as you're in one area and slowly gain more access as you gain special abilities. I really liked this aspect of the gameplay and thought the movement was pretty nice. You simply move with your d-stick and by pressing different buttons assigned to different spirits you can do special actions. You can also jump by pressing A and you use R1 and L1 in order to hit the drum and R2 in order to talk to people. You'll want to talk to people quite often and you'll also be able to use this to interact with the environment that will tell us different stories for you or give you more information. There is one part of the gameplay that absolutely lost me and that was the lack of map. There is no map and while the environment does give you a lot of direction on where you need to go, you know with the lighting and stuff like that, I found myself getting lost a lot. I am someone who due to various things cannot keep a lot in my mind, that is to say my memory for direction is really really bad. If you've ever driven with me you know this as I need direction no matter how many times I've gone to a place, and most of my gameplay was spent just retracking and retracking because I couldn't figure out how to get back to where I needed to go. I thought this was a really weird thing not to include a map, and it made the game almost unplayable. To be honest, I had to put the game down several times and even had a meltdown at one point because I couldn't figure out where I needed to go no matter how hard I tried. It's a real shame that they missed that. The difficulty other than the lack of map was pretty consistent. I died a few times and got stuck on a few difficult platforming bits, but it never felt too hard. I think it was very well balanced and I think if you've played any sort of platformer before, you might get stuck a few times, but it'll never be too difficult for you. There aren't any accessibility options, which is also a shame, and I really hope they add some in the future. Now, the visuals at first I found to be very generic, however, the colors used are absolutely gorgeous. There's these fall deep reds and blues and it just looks amazing. The lighting is also absolutely wonderful. There's rays of sunlight everywhere and it just looks so lively. What could have been very basic visuals became wonderful and fitting for the story, though some of the animations were reused such as grabbing the bunnies. There's a little side mission where you're finding lost bunnies and it uses the same animation every time when you grab them. There was a few sputters and frame drops throughout, though these were few and far in between so I didn't mind them too much. It seemed like it needed just a tiny bit more polishing but otherwise that was great. And then there's 
there's the soundtrack. The soundtrack is amazing. The only way I can think to describe it is this folky music with lots of drums and it's just amazing. The characters speak in their native tongue, which I thought was a wonderful touch, and even though I couldn't understand them, the subtitles help. It was beautiful. I could really feel their personalities by hearing them talk and the music was so serene that I couldn't help but love it. This is the kind of soundtrack that you want to listen to over and over and over again. It was absolutely great. I like the game. I think it has a unique concept and I love all the culture and background that it puts into it. It was delightful and the animation and soundtrack were amazing. However, that lack of map made it impossible for me. If you have a hard time keeping track of locations, maybe skip it. I want to return to it if it gets these fixes, but otherwise I don't think I will. For now, thank you so much for watching and a special thank you to all the great indie warriors and indie legends. Phil T, Christian Cruz, Kevlo, Adriana Amato, CJR, PSC, Julian Colbus, Jesse, Raylan, Marky Mint, Dave Hart, Peekaboo, Lex Noyle, Carmine Red, and King of the Hatch. And let's not forget the indie legends, Jen Rose, Larkison, Mitchell Hall, Peach, Skeptism, C. Coyle, Nathan Moore, Chris Jackson, Mr. W, Blue Francis 14, The Beeferinis, and Business Cody. Thank you for your support by watching this video. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any reviews or gameplay impressions. Help us bring a voice to the voices once in gaming and have a great day!